Hey, this is Seth, and in this video, I want to talk to you about developing a winning mindset. My experience with this and how to cut through a lot of the BS to get to what it really means to have a winning mindset. Because I know this because I used to have a non-winning or a losing mindset about 10 years ago. And um, when I changed how I think about things, my entire life changed. So what does it mean to have a winning mindset? A winning mindset, in my experience, it doesn't mean that you're like crushing the competition and like pumped up and like, yeah, that kind of a thing. Winning mindset simply means that you have an approach to yourself and to life that works and gives you a chance to come out victorious or achieve success in whatever area you are pursuing, whether it's relationships or finance, career, health, fitness, exercise. There's winning and losing mindsets. Most people don't realize that they're walking around with a crappy mindset. So when it comes to uh, business, you know, one of the most important aspects of a winning mindset is a sense of teachability and humility. <laughs> now, one of the problems I had when I was younger, even into my early 30s, is I was a know-it-all, wise-ass. And there's so many people I run into, even students or people who are thinking about taking my course. They're walking around, and you're like, your life, some area of your life isn't working. You know, you're not making very much money, or you might not have a job or whatever. It doesn't mean there, you're, there's anything less about you as a person, but that area just isn't working. Someone will walk around and walk, come up to me, and, you know, I'm the expert. I've been doing this for years. I've helped thousands of people with digital marketing. And people come to me and be like, well... I want to learn how to get a job in digital marketing, but I already know all of this stuff that you're teaching. And I'm like, well, how come you don't have a job? <laughs> and they don't really usually have an answer. So you may be looking at some area in your life. That's how I was. You know, I thought I knew everything. It's a psychological, ego-based delusion that so many people have. You know, I was walking around life. I was broke. I was having so many struggles financially, but every time somebody who was more successful than me tried to give me advice, I would just shut them down. I'd be like, well, you know, I don't think it's really going to work for me. That doesn't really make that much sense to me. No, no, I'm going to figure it out. And the moment I turned, it was really 2013 when I had a, a person in my life who was making a lot more money than me. I literally said to them, just tell me what to do. And in that moment, I became coachable, teachable. He said, there's a certain CD series I listen to. It's very powerful. Take it very seriously. Listen to it all the time, and it will change how you think. And instead of being like, well, I know better than this guy, or, you know, I, I, I don't know, whatever other used, objections I used to have because I don't think that way anymore, I thought, okay, I'm going to listen to this guy who clearly has better results than me, and I'm just going to shut up and just listen. <laughs> and I did. And then six months after I took it, started taking this seriously, I started to really examine the negative thoughts I had about money and myself and a lot of other things and I started to change how I think everything in my life started to open up and change and led me to the place where I was making six figures at a job and then my business helping people across the world and I know the mindset had a huge part of that so that's the thing you got to be teachable if you watch and study winners study people like Michael Jordan Michael Jordan is one of my favorite athletes and people to study and I'm very particular about who I study too, because there's people like Steve Jobs who everybody idolizes. I don't study him, or I, I don't like, I don't want to emulate him. I like to study people I want to be like. So be like, I like to be like Michael Jordan because he he's a super. Uh, there's aspects of his personality that are a little bit crazy. You know, you may have heard him. He would actually make up imaginary rivalries with his the other players just to get himself fired up and angry so that he'd perform. That's an interesting technique. Um, it works. I don't really like to do that. But, you know, his overall attitude is just like one of a champion. You know, he has an incredible determination. He loves being part of a team. He likes leading that team. But I just like to listen to him and how he approaches things. And he has a great attitude towards failure. He's got some great quotes where he talks about he got to fail to win. Because, he's you know, he missed game-winning shots. He lost for years. But the Pistons beat him, but he didn't give up. Um, and Steve Jobs is... Some people idolize him I, or study him. I think he's a little, a little more on the compulsive side of things, not someone I'd ex exactly like to be like. Um, but who is another one? Kobe Bryant. Kobe, Michael Jordan talks about this, how Kobe was like a little kid, a little brother to him. And he, here's, here's Kobe Bryant, the super talented, 
you know, multimillionaire basketball player, just asking Michael Jordan question after question because he wanted to, he knew Jordan was a master. He wanted to study. He didn't walk around going, I'm Kobe Bryant. I don't need to learn it. He just wanted to keep learning and wanted to keep learning, wanted to keep learning. That's a winning attitude. This thirst for knowledge, a thirst to, uh, to learn more and to be humble about it and not walk around going, oh, I know everything, which kind of, kind of fits into the first thing that I said. And then I would also say, so there's, there's a balance along those lines between arrogance and <laughs> humility, like uh, over humility. So what I find is a lot of the people I run into, you're either on two extremes and you want to be right in the middle. Some people are super awesome and have so much going for them and they're too, they're not, it's not even humility, it's kind of a low self-esteem thing. It's like you've already learned these skills, you already could help small businesses, but you don't feel confident in your skills and abilities, which is absolutely normal for anyone in a new situation. But you have to really, you have to own the fact that you actually learned something and you have value to offer. And your ego gets in the way, in a negative way in that, in that case, where it's like, oh, I'm not, I'm brand new, I couldn't possibly help anyone, whatever other stories people have. And that is one extreme where that's getting in the way of you winning because you're not even seeing things clearly. Like when I teach you these skills in the course, for example, or if you're you know, in any other pursuit, if you're learning coding or something, you actually learn how to code and build an app or something, you literally objectively can help somebody. And if you find yourself getting in your own way, you are just being delusional because you're like, oh, I can't help. It's like, it's, it's almost like you've taken the conversation of like, oh, I can't ask that person to the dance because they'd never accept me. And it's a very, this is a very emotional, self esteem type thing. And you've projected it onto this simple black and white skill set, which is simply like if you can do Google ads and you know how to structure an account, it doesn't matter how old you are, where you come from, you can do that. <laughs> Just like if you could fix, you know, fix somebody's carburetor. Doesn't matter anything about your personality, it's, can, you can do this. So I find a lot of people get in the, their own way in that sense and they become too self-depreciating. And they, those people need a lot more confidence and, just, and not, a lot more just taking action and going for it. And the other extreme, there's an arrogance that can come from some people. I was like this. This was me. I was, and, and this, they, they flip-flop. I was like that when I was younger too. I had a mixture of arrogance, like, I know everything, I'm too good for stuff, and my insecurities. And that is not a great combination. So if you come into the course or any pursuit and you have this attitude of like, okay, I need to do this on my terms, oh, this isn't happening quick enough, I don't need to really learn to follow the directions, come on, give me a job right now, you're on the other extreme now. Um, now, <laughs> you might be the person that's actually much more comfortable putting yourself out there and pushing and things like that, but... Then you have another aspect of your personality that's too, too arrogant or too entitled. And that's not a winning mindset either. You know, someone like Michael Jordan is supremely confident, supremely confident over time. But he also knew, <laughs> he knew when he had to pass the ball to Steve Kerr, 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 whatever, I forget how to pronounce it last name. He knew when he needed to pass the ball to his teammates, right? And you see that in a lot of... Um, a lot of baseball sports teams, I like these sports analogies, when you put too many superstars on one team, the teams don't usually win because the people, there's too much ego, too much arrogance, and everybody's just trying to perform for themselves. They're not thinking of the team. They're not thinking of the unit. So, you know, the middle ground is the best place to be. This is the winning attitude. The winning attitude is when you come into the job or to the opportunity and you're like super positive, you're super excited, you know you have value to offer, but you also know, but, you know so that's your confidence. You're not arrogant, but you're also not like self depreciating like, oh, I could never do this. You're like, let me see if I can, let me see if this is a good fit. Let me see if this is going to work. How can I contribute to the company? How, what can I give? What can I share? Not what's in it for me. That's another aspect of a winning attitude is you're, you want to know what can you offer to other people. I tell you, even with my training, when I made this course, that was a huge life shift for me because I was only focused on how I could help the people that would take my course. I had no idea it would be financially. I, I kind of thought it might make me a little bit of money, but I didn't know it would turn into like an actual business. And I've just continued to focus on how I can help you guys and when you walk into a business, all you have to do is focus on how can I help these guys. And 
that's what winners do. <laughs> they don't walk in and go, what's in it for me? You can see this, back to the sports analogy, with some of these free agents in all different sports, from baseball, basketball, football. You can see these free agents that have gotten paid so much money, they have such a big ego, and when they walk into the room, it's all about how much can I get paid. And again, there's, you know, teams will sign these guys because they have such raw talent, but you see again and again where that acquisition didn't pan out for the whole team. And sometimes it does. I mean, you know, like Tom Brady gets signed by the Tampa Bay. Of course, that worked out. But you, you could look at 100 other examples where it didn't because they were just focused on themselves. So, again, put your focus on the people, the company, the business that you're trying to get hired by or to work with. How can you help them? That is a winning attitude. Um, and that's it. And winning, and by the last thing I was going to say, winners don't always win. Winners don't always win. It's your attitude. I'm telling you, this is huge because this, this stops people from trying, this fear of failure. I love that Michael Jordan quote again about, he says, like, you know, you, you've got to fail to succeed. He lists all his failures, all the game, you know, the last minute shots that he lost, all the times he lost the championships. And you have to get comfortable with that to win. I had the biggest problem myself when I was younger. I didn't want to fail ever. Most of us don't ever want to fail, it's too painful. This happens from also if you're a good student in school, it's going to screw you up. You want that good grade. You want that gold star. You're not comfortable. That's why all my friends who didn't do well in school or dropped out did much better than me as we got older because they were just more comfortable fuck screwing up because you're going to do it. You're not going to get every, you know, and even in baseball, you hit the ball two out of ten times or three out of ten times, sorry, three out of ten times you're a Hall of Fame baseball player. You really need to drill these analogies into your head, especially when you're making applications or you're launching a business, you're talking to clients and you talk to four or five different people and nobody's interested and you don't walk home, you know, put your head down and go, oh, it's never going to work. You go, great, I'm getting closer to the person that is going to be right. If you put out a bunch of job applications and you hear back from two but they don't work out, you don't just hang your head and go, oh, that's not going to work. You keep going. That's the winning attitude. And you don't have to – if you have this attitude – in your core, you don't have to force yourself. You just understand this is how it works. You, you know it's not going to always be the first or the second or the third one, or even the fourth or the fifth. It might be the eighth time that you try, but you keep going, and you learn, and you grow, and that is a winning attitude. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you found this insightful in some way. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If there's any other topic you want me to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comments and I will see you next time.